Welcome back to the channel guys, hope everyone's doing well. Today is a video about Meshtastic, the off-grid messaging system. Now, for those of you who've been following the channel for a while, you'll know that I've done quite a lot of Meshtastic content, and then there's been quite a lot of time where I haven't done anything or I've seemed to have been a bit quiet on the whole subject. More on that later. But for those of you that don't know what Meshtastic is, it's basically a way of using little devices like this. This is a new 3D printed case, which has just, just been released. This is a limited edition version. More on that later as well. But it allows you to use little devices like this to form an off-grid mesh network that is completely decentralized, doesn't use the internet, and you can exchange messages between people in your local area. Now, I when I first discovered this, I was absolutely all over it because for, for a long time now, I've been quite obsessed by the whole off-grid messaging thing, the whole system of like, oh, maybe we can send messages across, you know, areas where there isn't any cell phone coverage or you just want to do a private encrypted link between two areas. It's just fascinating for me, probably because I come from a ham radio background and I like a bit of prepping stuff as well. But yeah, basically... I was absolutely all over and all excited about it. Now, Meshtastic has really taken off in the UK um, to the point where in some areas it's so busy that it's actually quite a difficult thing to use because <laughs> there's so many stations that the, um, the airwaves get really, really clogged up. Now, Meshtastic uses a system called LOA, which is stands for long range basically and it's a very very clever system that enables um, communication between devices um, it was originally designed for iot um, but it's it means that you can send data over very very long distances almost breaking the laws of physics but not quite it kind of employs a lot of clever technology to allow messages to get through, um, you know, get through very, very harsh environments, RF-wise. So, you know, you will see a massive, massive dramatic difference between the range of something like Wi-Fi or conventional amateur packet radio um, versus this lower technology. And it's on a very, very high frequency as well. On the UK and EU, it runs on 868 megahertz, which is quite a high frequency, but it's a very useful frequency. So to give you an idea of how busy it is on the Meshtastic network in the UK right now, you can head over to this map at mpower247.com and you can see here we've got a lovely heat map which shows you the, the kind of hotspot areas. So basically around the London area and around the sort of Manchester, Liverpool kind of area, basically, where, where myself and Ringway Manchester um, reside. Um, not saying we have anything to do with it, but I think we might be a little bit of a part of it. Now, you can zoom right in and you can actually see individual nodes here. Now, these aren't dynamically added or scraped from the network. These just literally are people that have uploaded their rough position to show others, you know, encourage others to sort of get on and also help others make network connections. Because one of the great things about Meshtastic is you're gonna to wanna to find local people that you can actually kind of mesh with. So this map really helps that. So you can see here, there's a few stations around this area. Potentially this one might be able to reach this one, who knows, but you'll only really find out when you dive in. Now, it's been absolutely brilliant to see this take off in such a way that is almost like, I don't, I can't remember a time where anything radio related has actually kind of taken off so well in the last, you know, six months. If we look at the map here, we've got 1,169 nodes registered. That doesn't include all the nodes because obviously there's going to be more where people haven't put their nodes on this map. So if you want to add yourself to this map, go over to this website here, empower247.com and get your node uploaded. So yeah, it's been absolutely brilliant. I've always dreamt of something like this and I've been so excited by the whole system um, and that is why obviously I made lots of videos about this in the early days. Now I think much of the reason it has been so popular is because these devices are very, very cheap. You can basically pick up one of these little dev boards. This is a Helltech V3 Lower 32. Um, you know, these are readily available now. In the beginning of when this Meshtastic thing kind of really started to rock and roll in the UK, it was very difficult to 
get hold of these devices. But now these are quite available and we even have a stall up and running now, which I'm involved in that can help get these devices to you and they're all tested before they go out of the door. And the website for that is mpower247.com, same as the map, but without the map. Um, and you can see all the devices are here and some other nice merch and some other, other bits and pieces on here as well. The guys behind this running this day to day, shout out to you, Mark and Neil, are fantastic guys and you'll see them on our Discord, which is also a great place to get information for Meshtastic. But the guys are great. They've been working really, really hard, creating new relationships with, in particular, this company here, Rack, which do some amazing products. So it's been absolutely brilliant to see that we've got some really good suppliers on board for this, for this website. So head on over there, support the cause. You know, none of us are going to get rich overnight with this stuff. We're doing it for the love and we're doing it to help you guys make sure that we can get this network rocking and rolling. Which brings me on to the next thing I want to talk about, the network. So I mentioned this earlier, it's a mesh network, which means devices like this will link together automatically and they will pass messages and information through. So you can leave one of these devices turned on, you can leave it by a window ledge or put it in the loft or something like that. And when another one comes into range, it will literally link together with it automatically. See what I did there? Now, because of the massive growth of this, this has been a bit of a blessing and a curse because right in the beginning, we had one device sitting there, well, I had one device sitting here and there was no one else around. I could literally just sit there all day and no other devices were in range of my particular device. So I got to kind of messing around with different antenna setups and kind of, you know, put rigged up some stuff because, you know, I've got a bit of a ham radio background, so I kind of like experimenting with antennas and that is a big part of this hobby. Eventually, another user part popped up about seven kilometers away from me. And we had some experiments backwards and forwards, and we ended up changing our antennas and using two Yagi antennas, basically pointing towards each other to maintain a solid connection. Absolutely fantastic. I was blown away by this because, you know, we're making a seven kilometer contact reliably, and we can just sit there and message backwards and forwards, and it worked absolutely brilliantly. So I was thinking, this is gonna be amazing. The more people we have involved, the more people that we get on this mesh network, the better it's gonna be. You know, let's just put loads of videos out and just get more and more people involved. And this kind of worked to an extent. In this area, I saw people popping up, you know, left, right and center. They're like, oh, you know, Andy's on, so maybe we'll go and, you know, get involved in this. I'm not far from him, let's see if we can network. So there was a quite a big explosion of users. And the same happened with Lewis, Ringway Manchester. In his area, he kind of, you know, did lots of videos and people in his kind of immediate area started getting interested in this as well. So I rolled it forward a few months and we started to see quite an uptake of new stations appear. You know, there was lots of different ones in, in you know, spreading across probably about four, three or four towns in my immediate local area. So super exciting. Oh, how can we kind of, you know, link all these together and make it make it really work? Some were automatically just working. Others were reporting that they weren't having um, any luck kind of making connections, even though they were in these areas. Um, so, yeah, there was a lot of experimentation taking place and a lot of kind of messages exchanged on Discord, on my Discord, where, you know, a lot of people came together. I'll put the link down below for that, because if you are kind of, you know, pulling your hair out and you can't make a network connection or something like that with anyone else, then um, my Discord is a great place to go because it's it's all kind of UK people and some of them are in this immediate area and beyond. But yeah, it got really interesting. You know, there's lots of stations around, but there seemed to be a bit of an underlying problem. The messaging seemed a little bit unreliable and a little bit flaky. It seemed like we could only message when the signal strength was very, very strong. And you can only generally exchange messages between very close stations, like reliably, I mean. So for example, if we look at our map, a station that might be here could also see all of these ones in the surrounding areas. So you could see this one over here, and you could also see, you know, potentially one over this direction as well. And, you know, all seem to be quite good. But when it came to sending messages, it just didn't seem to work. And the reason for this is actually quite simple. It's actually a very, very simple system. It just uses a flood routing algorithm, which basically means the packet gets spit out and whoever receives it, receives it. Now there is a little bit of a twist on this. The algorithm will try to push out the reach of the mesh network by, by kind of routing through um, nodes that have actually got a lower signal strength. So it will try to you know, expand the reach 
of that network and try and get that message to that furthest point. But with an area where you've got lots of nodes dotted all over the place, you can get some strange routes happening where the message seems to get routed right out of the area and then back in. And sometimes the whole thing can just get lost in translation and messaging just does not work. And this has been a real shame because despite the initial excitement on this, some people have decided to leave and just sell their gear and just, you know, remove some of the nodes that are in that were in very good places. So we've seen a little bit of a pullback recently where some people have left, um, but we've also seen kind of new people coming along um, and wanting to give it a go. So that is a good thing. And that's the reason why, obviously, I wanted to get this video out here um, to sort of, you know, provide a bit of encouragement um, for the network. I got a bit burnt out with it, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I had lots of lots of incoming messages and lots of stuff happening day to day. Um, and, you know, I love this project. But yeah, it was getting, it got a little bit much. <laughs> so I had to pull back a little bit and I've got lots of different things that I do on this channel. Um, it wasn't always gonna just be about this. So, you know, I've, I've done some other things basically. But anyway, I'm back on it and I've got some ideas of how we can make this mesh network really, really work a lot better. Um, I've had taken some time to do some experiments outside of Meshtastic with some different LoRa stuff. And yeah, I've, I've kind of learned quite a bit about how this works now. So hopefully I'll be able to provide a bit more insight into it. Meanwhile, though, there's been lots of exciting developments with Meshtastic, including we've seen a UK developer actually get some of his changes merged into the official firmware. Um, I'm talking about a thing called Hops Away. I'm not going to explain that now, but it's a very useful feature that is now included in the latest firmware that shows you how many hops away you are from a node in your list. So that's really cool. Well done to Dale on that. It's been really good to see that happen. Now, the other thing, of course, I was gonna talk about is this new case here. So this is a new case for the Helltech V3 LoRa 32. How cool is that? So this is called the Nibbler. Now, the original case that um, Chris made, so Chris is from Zero Fox 3D, um, the original case was this one here called the Bender. And I love this case. And I, I rant and raved about it when it first came out because I thought, this is fantastic. It's like a kind of little router that could sit on your window ledge and everything else. It, amazing little case. But he's just gone and kind of taken it one step further here um, and created this thing called a Nibbler, which basically is a, like a pocket device which has a belt clip how cool is that you can see that there and also it's got the ability to connect an sma antenna here this antenna is actually a one from a t echo um, which you could which is from lily go but yeah i've got that antenna on there and it seems to be working brilliantly but one thing i really do like about the whole um the lower 32s devices is the fact that they have this oled screen I, I, you know, I'm not a big fan of the e-paper screens because of the refresh rate and the um, the lower 32s are really good. And there's been quite a bit of work done to the to the firmware, actually. I'm pretty sure this the lower 32s now actually um, have quite a bit of extra runtime. I'm seeing, you know, 18 hours out of this. So if you want a nibbler, head over to zerofox3d.com. You can see it on the front page here. There's a couple of different versions you can get as well as different color options as well. But basically there's like a pocket version which doesn't have an external antenna and you've got this kind of belt clip on the side. Um, lovely looking little thing, uh, really, really compact and just kind of works really well. It's got an internal antenna. So none of these actually have um, a battery or the Helltech device included just like all the others you have to purchase the Helltech and the battery separately this is just basically like an enclosure for those dev boards um, the other version you can get is obviously the one I just showed you um, and that is this one here which has got the um, external antenna mounting there this is probably going to be the one that most people go for I would say because you want the ability to add an external antenna um, <clears throat> you know if it's if you're going to use it uh, you know, in a in an area where you might it might need an extra bit of help to get get a signal um, to the network. So yeah, it's super cool. All different colours available on this one. I really like this green version, um, sort of a bit kind of military looking, um, and that's super cool. So the the limited edition one is not even on here yet. So the limited edition version, this one here, sort of stormtrooper, but with like a kind of translucent, um, you know, main case. This one is the Kirby special edition, and that one's going to be on the site. Uh, very shortly as well. 
Um, yeah, so cool. Love these little devices. So guys, I think that's us caught up. If you want to find out more about Meshtastic and this whole project, head down to my Discord and dive straight in. There's loads of people that can help get you set up. Um, I've got some plans for my new home base setup, so I'm going to be covering that in sort of future videos, um, including this pretty cool thing, which is a solar, a fully solar um, powered node which is going to be installed soon in another video so watch out for those and i'll catch you next time